Hello, everyone. And this is my first podcast on Podbean, and I hope you enjoy. I'm going to be talking about a variety of topics. And today's uh, podcast is all about the uh, very interesting topic of the Bible and slavery. Hello, everyone, and this is my first podcast, and today we're going to be talking about the Bible and slavery. I'm going to start inviting people. Let's see how I do this. And uh, we're going to talk about the Bible and slavery. So... Let me read the summary for you, and then we can do some commentaries on the Bible and slavery, okay? Um, Welcome to our podcast on the Bible and slavery. In this episode, we will be exploring the complex relationship between the Bible and slavery, examining various interpretations and historical contexts. Firstly, it is important to note that while slavery was common during the time the Bible was written, it does not necessarily condone or endorse slavery. Many of the patriarchs in the Bible, such as Abraham and Jacob, had slaves. But it is important to understand that this was a cultural norm at the time. So I don't know how that justifies it. In the Bible, slavery was not based on race or ethnicity, but rather on debt and war. Slaves were often owned by individuals or households, and in some cases could work off their debt and eventually gain their freedom. However, this was not always the case, and in, as some slaves were kept in perpetual bondage. One of the most controversial aspects of the Bible and slavery is how it has been interpreted over time. Some have used biblical passages to justify the enslaved of African people in the transatlantic slave trade, while others have used the Bible to argue for the abolition of slavery. For example, in the book of Exodus, Moses leads the Israelis out of slavery in Egypt. This story was used as a rallying cry for slaves seeking freedom, as well as for abolitionists fighting against slavery. In the New Testament, the apostle Paul wrote a letter to Philemon, a slave owner, urging him to treat his runaway slave Onesimus as a brother in Christ. This demonstrates the Christian belief in the equality of all people. And um, let me let me stop for a second there somebody says can i call in i really don't know how you do that uh abc7 i don't know how you do this this is my first podcast so i don't know let me see call in i'm gonna press number one call in and see what happens uh Okay, I'm sorry, ABC7. I just don't know how to do it. Maybe on my next podcast you can call in, but I have no idea how to get you to call in. So let me finish the podcast, and maybe I can figure it out after I'm done. However, there are also passages in the Bible that appear to condone slavery, such as Leviticus 25, 44, 46. This is a new one. I didn't know about this, which states that slaves can be bought and passed down as property to future generations. This had to, this has led to debates 
and discussions over the true intentions of these passages and whether they should be interpreted literally or through the lens of their historical context. It is important to note that the Bible is not a monolithic text and its interpretation can vary greatly among different communities and individuals. The history of slavery in its relationship to the Bible is complex and multifaceted. It cannot be easily distilled into a single narrative. In conclusion, the Bible and slavery are inextricably linked and the true nature of this relationship is more nuanced than people realize. Well, I think this article here is a little bit contradictory because at the beginning it says that it's stated specifically in Leviticus that it's okay to own slaves. So I'm, you know, doubting this summary. Um, so some teachings are used to argue for the abolition of slavery and the equality of all people. It's up to each individual and community to interpret the Bible in a way that aligns with their values and beliefs. Thank you for listening, etc. Okay, ABC seven i'm going to try to figure it out i don't know how but let me see i go here invite go so copy uh, i don't know how to do it All right, ABC7, I still do not know how to get you to call in. I just have no idea. So uh, maybe you can message me through this. Let me see if there's another option. Oh, wait, I have to say allow call in. Hold it. Yeah, I have allowed call in. Okay, so you can call in. I don't know how, but you can call in. Okay, thank you, ABC7. You can definitely call in, but I have no idea what I'm doing here. I guess this is my first podcast. I just joined Podbean, and this is one of my first. I'm going to do daily some sort of summary like this. So, um, you know, uh, be patient. Okay. Uh, okay. So here it is. Um, I'm going to try call in number two. Copy. All right. Okay. Oh, here it is. Here you are. 29 follow, six follow. Follow. Maybe if I follow you. Oh, invite a speaker. Okay, here we go. Okay, ABC7, I somehow figured out how to get you on here. So I don't know if you can speak or what you can do, okay? All right. Okay, so I've done my best here to figure out and I'm gonna continue the conversation. And if, if you're here and if you know how to join the meeting, I just don't know what I'm doing here. Again, I'm going to try to read the instructions later, <clears throat> but let's see what we have. I don't know. I just pasted something. Okay. Um, all right. So <clears throat> this conversation was very interesting to me because a lot of people like to quote the Bible and throw it at the LBGTQ community and say, oh no, you know, um, 
the Bible says that gay behavior is bad. You know, it's it's a sin. It's uh, it's abomination, and it's not true. Leviticus says that, and maybe a couple of other passages, but there's like three or four patches, passages that mention the word homosexual in today's um, in today's context um, of of language. But if you read further into the Bible and what they're referring to, and then you understand that slavery was commonplace in those days, they had slaves for everything. Um, the word, the way that it was done, it was um, slaves, young children were used as slaves like they are today in the sex trade, child sex trafficking. Um, to make money as prostitutes, boys and girls. And they used children because they wanted to avoid pregnancy. Then when they were done using them for that, they moved on to slavery as household members or servitude in homes or construction or whatever they decided they wanted them for. Farms, you know, pick crops. Anything that needed to be done that required two hands and two legs, the slaves were used for. Because most of the people owned not only slaves, they owned land. And without slavery, they couldn't make the land produce. This idea that farmers did all the work themselves, thats there's no way they could do all the work themselves, not without machines. They had a couple of animals, but someone had to feed the animals, take care of the animals. So there were slaves, uh, unless the family had, you know, 25 kids that they trained to be farmers. They had to have slaves. That was the only way or farm workers, they couldn't afford to pay the, the workers anything, mainly because they could afford it. But, um, you know, the kings and everybody, running the farms in those days, whether it was the Romans or the Egyptians, they taxed them. So they, 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 all the money that they had went to the tax man. And so the only way that they could produce enough food to be able to keep their lands and pay their taxes was to have slaves. They had no choice in those days. And it was a commonplace. And children were used for sex for the richer people, the tradesmen, whoever had a couple of bucks in those days, a couple of a few dollars, they uh, serviced them with children because this way they could get money out of it. And this is recorded in history because if you go to Pompeii, they have a building where this took place and the children were used and they have it drawn in the building. It's, it's in stone what they did, okay? What they, you know, they paid for different services and it's right there in the stone. And they were kids. They always used kids. How were they gonna use older people when the girls would get pregnant? And the men, they wouldn't make enough money servicing other men. First, they don't look like girls. And second of all, when they're men, they really should be making money out there working a farm or doing some other labor. So that's the reality of what went on then. The Romans, the Greeks, the Egyptians used slaves. Of course, it's recorded in the Bible that they used the Jewish slaves. The Jews were white. I don't think they did the heavy labor. I'm sure they did stuff, but it wasn't the heavy labor. They had all kinds of slaves. They brought slaves in and each slave or worker or, you know, they could have been considered workers in that they were working for a very small wage, maybe just for food. Maybe they weren't actually owned, but these people had no other place to go. Uh, if there was famine in their lands in Africa, they had to move uh, north over to, uh, to uh, get work in Egypt and build uh, pyramids, tombs, houses, whatever it was, okay? 
Same thing in Israel and same thing in all these cities. These were construction workers. What you could call them slaves because they worked for nothing practically, or you and they were all colors. Each type of person did whatever they could do best. You know, the heavy labor, they usually imported the black slaves for obvious reasons, you know. Um, the white people that were there were usually the rich people. And if they weren't the rich people, they were working for the rich people and they were probably managing projects or doing some of the other types of work, the carpentry, you know, it was depending on the kinds of strength that these people had. Okay. So that was the norm of the day. So when they're saying about homosexual behavior, homosexual behavior was pedophilia by usually heterosexual men who were married, had kids, and this is what they were paying for, prostitution. Okay, and it's stated in the Bible that this prostitution was becoming a problem in Israel and they didn't want it going on because it was it was it was getting too big. There was too much of it. Okay. And usually there were kids involved. So you can research this further and find out that this this society uh of the Bible was a highly racist, enslaved uh, society of abusing human beings as slaves and abusing children for sex objects dominated by a ruling class of rich people who could abuse others and take advantage of them. And people in, you know, conquerors who taxed people to the point that they were gonna lose their lands unless they employed slaves and gave most of their crops to the conquerors like the Romans, okay? Probably the Egyptians. So they can keep trading for gold and making themselves bigger monuments and bigger tombs. You know, how did they make all this money? Well, they made all this money by stealing from the farmers through the tax man. The same way, the same way the US government makes themselves these great monuments today by taking your tax dollars right it nothing has really changed technology has changed but people are still slaves to a job people are still slaves to a minimum wage they're still slaves to a mortgage and to loans and to many many other ways to enslave people today and you know, it, it says in the summary that I just presented that most of the slavery was due to debt. So well, today you may not be owned as a slave, but you are paying off your debt. And if you don't pay your debt, student loan, mortgage, whatever, you can't escape this debt. You can't just walk away. You may be able to walk away from your house and just leave it there and the tax and the uh, loan officer might just take over the house. But in a lot of cases, you may go to jail if you don't pay your debt. So that's a form of slavery. So nothing has really changed that much, okay? You're not that much better off today than you, the people were in those days. There is a ruling class who apparently doesn't seem to have to pay their debts who seem to get paid for all kinds of information. Apparently they sell information for money. Uh, and and there's they sell children for the pleasure of other people. And, and nothing has really changed that much except for the technology of which you're also a slave to because you're a slave to your phone, you're a slave to your computer, you're a slave to all the technology. They charge you for this. So think about, about slavery, whether there's a piece of paper that says they own you or a piece of paper that says you owe something, you're still a slave. You're still a slave to that debt. So um, that's something I wanted to let you know. Do cheer you up for today, but cheer up. You can escape your debt. You can stop, you can stop buying stuff on credit minimize your credit 
minimize uh, your mortgages, pay off your mortgages, pay off your car loan, learn to live with less and find yourself a piece of land off the grid and maybe you'll finally be free. Okay, thank you everybody and I hope you're all okay. Bye-bye now.